volcanoes can be unpredictable. Lucky for us, scientific equipment is much more advanced than it used to be, and this has helped us to determine when a volcano is close to erupting. One thing that equipment can't do though is protect people. Several years back, a Taurus fell into the crater of a volcano in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Scientists at the time announced that Miss San climbed over the crater rim in order to get a better look at the volcano. It misplaced her footing and fell more than 100 meters. Researchers in the region who went to investigate what happened announced that after the fall, she was resting on a ledge that was just above the lava. Clestin Kasaka, director of the Volcanological Observatory in the nearby city of Gomez, said the following She didn't survive, but they haven't yet been able to remove the body. End quote. Equipment was used in order to see how she was and if she had survived the fall, and although officials said that they could see initial signs of movement, they had to call off any further investigations due to poor visibility. Due to her showing signs of life, a team went out there that comprised of 20 Indian peacekeepers from Congo's UN mission, along with volcanologist Jacques Daru. At the time, she was travelling through the local national park with guides when the incident happened. The guides did warn her and told her not to venture too close to the rock. However, as they turned away, she made her way down in order to get a better look at the volcano. Nothing else has been announced, but news stations in the region reported that she passed away from injuries, and that the team wanted to venture down and bring back her body. Another similar story is that of a 21-year-old student named Kiyako Masumoto, who voluntarily threw herself into a volcano. This incident happened back in February 1933. The volcanic crater of Mount Mahara can be found on the Japanese island of Inzu Oshima. Miss Matsumoto was a student at the time, and attended Tokyo's Jisan College. At the time though, she had met another student, and soon started to develop feelings for her. She soon penned a letter which reads as follows. Dearest, I am bewildered to distraction by the perplexities of maturing womanhood. I can stand the strain no longer. What shall I do? I should like to jump into a volcano. End quote. Being in love with another woman would have been frowned upon at the time, and knowing this she decided that Mount Mahara would be her final resting place. Oddly enough, Mount Mahara was known in the region as a place where people would take their lives. It's not known exactly why this is, but some have suggested that the reason for this was because it was so easy to reach, and once you reached the top there was an easy accessible observation post that allowed you to look inside the volcano. Although this story is the most well known one, and has been linked to the volcano, over 10 years before this event happened, people were throwing themselves into Mount Mahara. Although these events were rare, it's a sad truth that they did happen. At the time, people who were struggling would also make their way to the top of skyscrapers, and use that as a way out. However, owners and officials decided to put preventative measures in to help, and so placed railings and other fixtures in order to drastically reduce people going up there. This worked, but Kyoko Matsumoto would end up finding another way out by using Mount Mahara. Timoto told her friends about Kyoko Matsumoto, and instead of causing people to fear the location and stay away, it actually had the opposite effect. After the story and love letters made the rounds, people started to make their way to the volcano in order to do the exact same thing. Matsumoto even started to gain somewhat of a celebrity status. This was after this story got picked up again and featured by the mainstream media. Her note was reprinted and once again saw a surge of people make their way up to the volcano, and they did the exact same thing. It was also announced that back during 1935, Timoto had passed away, although what she passed away from is not entirely understood. Authorities and officials had revealed that at one point people were jumping into the volcano every week, with them saying that in 1936, 
over 600 people jumped into Mount Mahara. Authorities eventually took action and placed a fence around the base in order to deter people from going up there. The last story involves someone who fell into a volcano and survived. One of the strangest volcanoes is that of the mountain god found in Tanzania. Strangely, its lava never exceeds 500 degrees. Back in 2007, a local actually fell into this volcano during one of its active lava flows. The individual managed to pick themselves up and climb out. Although reporters in the region noted that he had suffered from multiple burns, except from this he was okay. It's very likely that he's the only person to have fallen into a volcano and survived. Volcanoes have been a source of fear and fascination for centuries. Humanity has respected, revered and even worshipped the world's volcanoes, while caring for what nature could do to them. Even now in our age of logic, we find ourselves at risk of their immense power, and the danger it holds over our mortal lives. The ocean is one of the most mysterious places. Various parts of it remain unexplored. The US Navy has recently come forward and announced that their equipment has picked up something mysterious moving at fast speeds under the ocean. The sonar data confirmed that the objects in question didn't match typical recordings they'd usually see, and happened around the same time as other strange reports. For years though, officials denied that these encounters were anything of interest. Now though, documents, testimonies and eyewitness reports have proven that these people were onto something, as various other pilots and Navy officials have said that this mysterious craft's in our ocean. US submarines have detected mysterious underwater crafts, saying that they're travelling at hundreds of knots beneath the ocean, with Tom Rogan being one of the people who shared this story saying that the United States Navy has data showing that submarines have detected a number of mysterious high-speed crafts, with them buzzing naval ships and then disappearing at fast speeds. Mr. Rogan said the following about the reports. I think what we may be looking at is a true unknown, which is to say intelligently controlled machinery that is not understood to be in the possession of the United States, China or Russia, which are the three most advanced countries in terms of military aviation. Researching this, there isn't anything that we have. Top secret information about what China or Russia have, or what we have at any of our top secret installations that can do what these things do in terms of performance. In the coming months and years, an area we will learn more about is the interaction between US Navy submarines, nuclear ballistic submarines and attack submarines, picking up sonar contact of things moving at hundreds of knots under the ocean. So there's a sort of undersea dimension to this that the Navy has sort of pushed aside. This is in the wake as pilots talk more about their experiences. One of the things we're going to find is that over a period of decades, a lot of the data, a lot of the measurements of these things has been put off as a technical aberration, or essentially a data malfunction because they didn't want to really admit that something very serious and special was going on. End quote. Researchers have said that the US Navy is well aware of what these objects are, and that at the moment they aren't releasing too much information about these things, with some amateur researchers saying that in the past Navy officials have detailed what they're picking up on, and have said that these mysterious crafts have been seen entering and exiting the ocean have a form of propulsion that's unlike anything we have, are able to go under the ocean without making a splash, and can easily outmaneuver things like jets. Astronomer Mark D'Antonio was taken for a ride on an attack submarine, and during this the sub encountered an unknown fast-moving object on sonar. He said the following, As a thank you for doing some work for them, the Navy asked me if I wanted to go for a ride in a submarine, so I said yes. Once we got under, I was sitting in the sonar station and the sonar operator was sitting right next to me. Submarines are loud. People think they're very quiet and it's true they are on the outside, 
because the sound doesn't get out, but inside you hear fans and various other noises. It's a constant din on a sub. I was sitting there zoning out a little because I was seasick, and all of a sudden the sonar kid shouts fast mover, fast mover and I'm jolted awake, thinking what's happening is it a torpedo. The executive officer comes in and the operator shows him the path of the object, and the officer says how fast is that going, and the kid said several hundred knots. I start to lean forward to listen in, and the officer said can you confirm it? So we went to another sonar machine and confirmed it wasn't a machine anomaly. It was real. I thought wow that's incredible. When the sonar guy said what should I do with this? The officer said log it and dog it. In other words log it and bury it. Four years later Mark asked a senior naval figure about what he saw. Saying the following. Can you tell me about the fast mover program? He looked at me and said, sorry Mark, I can't talk about that program. So he basically confirmed to me that the program exists. There's definitely no shortage of these mysterious crafts, and recent comments by US officials have only caused people to demand answers for what these objects are. John Ratcliffe recently said the following, We are talking about objects that frankly engage in actions that are difficult to explain. Movements that are hard to replicate, that we don't have the technology for, or travelling at speeds that exceed the sound barrier without making a sonic boom. End quote. As of right now, people are still waiting on an official answer of what it was that the Navy encountered, along with other reports that come in from everyday people, including fishermen that spend large amounts of time on the ocean. Many of these eyewitnesses are just everyday people who've encountered something that they couldn't explain. What these objects are, and how they're able to achieve what they do is still a mystery. So what do you make of these interesting stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.